Welcome back everybody to Growing Organic. All right, today I'm gonna to show you guys how to get rid of powdery mildew on your plants. So regardless of what, what plant has this problem, um, this solution is gonna be your best organic approach. So you can see here all these white spots. This is the white powdery mildew that's forming. We've had a lot of moist days in the last week or so we'd wake up in the morning and there'd be just water covered over these leaves. Everyone's gonna encounter this as a gardener, most likely. We're here in San Diego zone 10B, so at the beach. So it's, it's very, um, it has a marine layer at the coast here. So it's always very damp. But you can see the plant was doing excellent. This is all actually the pattern of the leaf. This part isn't mold here. You can see it just has a variation. These are huge leaves. You can see it's called a cube of butter. I really like this, the design of these leaves. But you can see already mold has infested this plant all the way around. I'm going to have to take care of this really quickly. The pow white powdery mildew, this will decimate this plant very quickly. My cucumber um, it might be getting some too. I think it's starting to get infected. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and treat this. I'm going to show you guys the best method for this note. What I have here is I have water and I have some half and half milk cream, just regular. You can use milk or half and half. This is a little more dense cream. So my ratio is going to be this. You can see right here, I filled this up. I'm at 25 ounces. I'm gonna fill up five ounces of the cream here. Let's see where we at there. It's hard to, hard to see in this light. Okay, we're good. So that's five parts water to one part half and half cream. We're going to go ahead and put the lid on. Shake this up. So I wrote on here as well, it's good to have a separate bottle for each of your uh, pest control methods. All right, I got my little trimmers. So we're going to just cut back some of the worst ones. I feel like this one is, that one's kind of bad. That one's bad. I'm not sure about this one if I want to cut that one. Yeah, that looks... You can't cut everything off if you want it to survive. It's like this one. This one branch actually got eaten by a caterpillar. I'll cut that branch. Make sure you don't compost this stuff. You want to throw this right in your dumpster away from your, your garden. Keep that in a pile over there. All right, now we're on to the spray. So go ahead and, again, full sun. I got some overcast today. This is fine, under 90 degrees. Just coat everything a couple times, top and bottom. First, I'm just going to do the tops. Keep track of what you're doing. Make sure you get every single thing. I'll hit that stem there too. And kind of shake your bottle every once in a while as you're, you're doing this to make sure it stays consistent. You're better to do a light coat and then come back. I'll go through everything once and then go over it one more time do a light coat kind of like a paint job you don't want the paint to drip it's better to do two light coats than, than one heavy because a lot of it will end up going on the ground if you don't you don't want to waste it i have another huge plant in the front yard i need to do the same thing to So 
So this is a, again, five parts water, one part milk, the half and half cream. Get to go around the, the entire plant. Not just, don't stand from one side and just spray the top. You have to go lift each leaf up, get behind where they're hiding, like this one. So now I got all the tops. So we'll go ahead and this is much easier if you have two hands. You, you can literally just bend over the leaves. every angle the better you do this the more success you're gonna have so after I do this come back tomorrow and see how it's looking so this is one of the only solutions you can do in the full Sun that's kind of why I like this you don't have to worry about having to do it in the evening or, or early morning maybe you not you don't have time to, to do that using like baking soda it's another common remedy but you can also burn the plants a little bit as well and they won't grow as well this is probably the best solution you can possibly do as an organic gardener it's such a diluted amount that you don't have to worry about spraying it on your vegetables it's not going to hurt a little bit um, in the sun all that any bacteria in there will just be uh, evaporated and it'll actually not harm anything. The key to growing organic is trying to avoid harmful pesticides, any toxic residue that you don't want to put in your body. So that's the main thing with this whole gardening channel I have here is to do things organically the best possible way I can think of. I'm not thinking about the proven methods that been around for, for centuries, I'm sure. So squash are very prone to the, this infection. And again, it's just humidity. So anytime it's humid and you see any moisture on the ground when you wake up, you're probably going to have problems with mold, this powdery mildew at those times. Everything was really fine. and. A heat wave they would get a little wilted but they never didn't have the mold the powdery mildew All right, I'm gonna hit it this a little more so what I'm gonna want to do is use my hands my other hand to lift it up I'll lift you want to lift it up like this and then spray with the other hand and make sure you go down each stem all the way down because there's mold spores all the way through here that's looking pretty good though I still have like how much I've only used about six ounces. So I'm gonna probably spray another four ounces on here and go to the front where I have more zucchini. Tomatoes are very prone to powdery mildew as well. So you can use these on tomatoes. Again, your cucumber. So look at that, see right there, I missed it. So this is why you have to lean the leaves back because it doesn't matter if you got one half of the leaf, that half of it's still still not coated. The fungus will grow back. Again, simple, quick solution to powdery mildew found in your refrigerator. Basically, most people have a little creamery, and I use it for my coffee. I don't really drink. I don't drink milk. I only use a little creamer because it just makes my coffee tastes a little better okay right there you can see I got the powdery mildew but not no milk yet on there so a little more spraying let me put the camera down I'll finish this off and then we'll go to the front yard all right let's walk over here here's my other squash right here this thing is huge um, you can see I just planted this actually a few weeks ago and it's taken over my entire planter. There's a little bit of beans over here. These are purple pulled, uh, bush beans. 
But this, these are actually six different plants in one. And you can see down in here, I do have the mold. Look at this. It usually happens where you don't have much circulation, airflow, and ability to dry out. So down in here, you can see, you want to keep these things thinned out. I'll just grab this. We're going to throw these in the trash. Any of these ones right here that are looking kind of moldy and small like, like this. I'll thin this out. So before we spray, remember, just try to get rid of the bad stuff first. This one is probably not necessary. Right down here, see closer to the dirt, the soil. This one right here is a little infected. But overall, it's actually much healthier than the one I have in the front yard, less infected. This area is very sunny and it's got a lot of, I think, more wind, more airflow open to the outdoors. So it's getting a little more quicker drying time. I have fences around my other one in the front yard, so it's basically keeping it from drying as much. But you can still see I do have this this problem forming here and we need to take care of this there's literally hundreds of these zucchini this is an Italian zucchini could be a little more disease tolerant than the, uh, the one I have in the front which is called a cube of a cube of butter let's get rid of this right here it's a little too much fungus These flowers are really pretty when they open up, though. I'm going to have just tons and tons of... Uh, this is a, the Italian squash. So long as this thing stays healthy... Let's get rid of this one here. So now let's go ahead and spray. Same thing with this. And first by targeting all the really infected ones that are visibly... infected starting to run a little low on this but even if it's not infected it's good as a preventative measure but just because you don't see it yet doesn't mean it's it's not starting to form it could just be at the beginning stages Over here, I have these these purple beans right here. These are really pretty. These are purple burgundy bush beans by San Diego Seed Company, and they seem to be doing excellent here. Very disease resistant. I don't see any mold on these whatsoever. But back to these squash. I'm having more problems with the squash here. I live right near to the beach as well in the ocean, but uh, there's a bay like a block away to the uh, to that direction towards the uh, south and then to the ocean. It's like three or four blocks to the Pacific Ocean, so I'm surrounded by moisture all the time. It makes it very difficult to keep up with this powdery mildew. So anyone that's growing in zone zone 10B, it depends what part of the world, but along the California coast, a lot of the Southern California coastline, uh, right along the water, like I am, is zone 10B. And it never gets very cold here. So we don't have to worry about things freezing. You can pretty much grow year round but you're going to also be growing a lot of fungus. And you'll have to be treating your plants quite often because there's no absolute cure. It's just treatments for this. So I'll finish this off so you guys got the idea. 
quick and easy way to treat your powdery mildew problem in your garden with something simple as as something simple as just right out of your refrigerator you can grab it at any time a lot of people do have a little creamer on hand even if, even if it's starting to go bad you can use the last bit of creamer you have and just go ahead and put it on your plants try to use organic creamer so everything about the show is organic try to all right I'm gonna turn the camera off guys because I'm gonna need two hands to do this finish spraying under these leaves you can see I have a little bit left All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe, click like, and we've got a lot more fun videos on the way. So don't give up on your gardening just because you have a few little problems like this because I know it can be really frustrating. Put all this money and time into it, but solve your problems pretty easily by doing this. I wish these would open up right now. I'm going to show you what they look like.